I'm saying to you is that Jimmy, he knew without any words that I got what he was doing. I'm starting to make clothes for him. He's freaking out. He loves it. But what does Jimmy always want? More. Money mean nothing to him. He doesn't even know what you're talking about. Never heard of money mean nothing. You know, it's past money. Way past money. So you guys never discussed money? Never. Ne never. Not once. Never. Are you kidding me? No. He would just say, go to them and get the check or, you know, whatever. How, how did you figure yeah. out how much to charge him? Ah, now you're into Tony Ackerman. So Tony, in the early days, we would come up with a price. Here's, you know, crushed velvet pants. They didn't have crushed velvet in those days, so we'd crush it ourselves, and we're doing fabric-covered buttons, and he's wearing these pants at Woodstock, okay? Aqua. Front seam pants, so the pants are tight to the knee. And then if you look from the side, that... It's coming down like this, then it gets wider as it comes to your foot, so it's going out to the toe of your shoe mm. and then to your heel. <clears throat> um, he sees what we're doing. He just wants more. Um, he's, he knows these people. He knows Tony. He knows Michael. They're just about making clothes that are cool. That's the, there's no thing, you know, I don't need you know, whatever, autographs or mean nothing to me. And Jimmy, just as an aside, says to my little Italian business partner, this is maybe 1968 or 9. Talking about Tony. Talking about Tony. <clears throat> Women are having sex with me just to say they had sex with Jimi Hendrix, meaning I wasn't in the room when he told her this story. He's talking to her because he can talk to her as a human. And he's getting something off his chest, which is a hurt. Hmm. And he says to her, women are having sex with me just to ha say they had sex with Jimi Hendrix. I'm 26 and a moron. So my reaction is, well, if there's a problem, me and the boys can help fill in the blanks. We don't want anyone's feelings to be hurt. Meaning it's just stupidity. Then I figured it out afterwards in the years that went by and women's libs started to happen that this is insulting to Jimmy, very insulting, meaning they just want a piece of him. They were stealing the clothes. When he says to me in this letter, dear couple, I need clothes expresso. Send whatever you have immediately. And I'm thinking, dude, who the hell do you think you're talking to? This is Mike. I'm, I just sent you. A whole wardrobe, who the, you know, what the hell's wrong with you? Then Mike figures out what's going on. What's going on is that the girls are stealing the clothes. That's number one. Number two, he's splitting the clothes. I'm using silk and rayon, rayon velvet that I'm talking about, meaning this <clears throat> is rayon velvet. So Rayon? Rayon. How do you spell that? <laughs> R-A-Y-O-N. Okay. And you're asking the wrong person about <laughs> spelling anything. But that, that one I knew. That's nice. Um, Can I so, touch it? Yes, yes, yes. So rayon velvet, when it, I'm making tight pants for a rock and roll guy who drops his ass down to the ground holding the guitar in front of him. This rayon velvet, this is meant for a proper lady's gown. End of story. This is not rock and roll. This is right. nothing rock and roll. And, but now we're back to the thing about that we were talking about. Knowing the specifications of all these different fabrics. So rayon, different colors run different ways. That's number one. From perspiration, from washing, you know, you get you, you give someone a rayon shirt that's red, you know, and it's a drummer. His body's going to be red at the end of the. This one's uh, not rayon. <laughs> that's cotton. Um, anyway, all I'm saying to you is that rayon, at the end of its, as you start to stretch it to its the end of its life, it'll just split. It'll just split. You'll have a foot long split in the thing. Mm -hmm. He was splitting the pants. I never knew this. He never says it to me ever. He just says in the letter, try to double stitch the pants. Mm. Right? That's what he's saying. Right. Now, 
just as an again an aside, maybe four or five years after Jimmy dies, Robin Trower, who we're making clothes for, a really known guitar player, is playing in Lakeland. I go there. This is a proper English guy, not into drugs, you know, whatever. Um, very proper and cool. We go there. He plays. We delivered some clothes. Anyway, he now, he and I and a couple of the roadies go out for dinner after the gig. One of the guys is a guy named Jerry Stickles. This is Jimmy's roadie from the beginning, the beginning. And what I'm saying to you about roadie is that this guy will do whatever it takes to save whatever the situation is that's going on with whoever he's working for. This is the no fool around kind of thing. This is not just someone setting up the microphones. This is his whole life is devoted to let's save Jimmy who just got in a car accident or did this or got caught with that, you know, whatever the thing is. He's the, the parachute when shit goes wrong. <laughs> okay, that's a way of saying it. Parachute says it all. So Jerry's there with us and he says that or he tells this story that Jimmy, um, I forgot where I was. Wait a second. You, you were meeting them at dinner or something? Yeah, and, yeah. And so Jerry Stickles is there and he tells this story <clears throat> that Jimmy is playing a gig in Seattle. That's his home. It's a revolving stage. Mm. Jimmy drops his ass down to the ground with his guitar in front of him, splits the pants. They throw him an English Union Jack flag, okay? He ties it on him like a diaper, two knots on his hip is the way I understand it. I never saw a picture of it. And the gig goes on. All I'm saying to you is that that's why Jimmy is saying to me, try to double stitch the pants, you know, as the years went on, I learned, well, you can't use this fabric on that human being because he can split it. And he doesn't wear underwear, right? That's the, that's the legend. No underwear, baby. <laughs> no underwear. Oh, Jesus. Could you imagine? Can you imagine? Seeing that happen. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs>